I thought we were the protectors of truth. Democrats, Republicans, you all lie. We, a small band of survivors, are on our way to the Steel City to find the resistance. Join us. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance with Senior Airman Ward Miller and the ironclad voice of Pittsburgh Hutch Jr. laying down verbal C4 to blow away the lies and the political tomfoolery. Your papers have been cleared. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Steel City Resistance. My name is Hutch Jr., and I am located deep down in the bunker in the city of Pittsburgh. Take two. And I'm Ward Miller, also in the city of Pittsburgh. We had a little, little, uh, a mini nuclear meltdown right before the show. Well, as right as the show started, and hopefully that that's uh, been taken care of. Yeah, I think we're okay now. And uh, as far as we go, Ward, I have to say that we were able to correct everything, and it is only seven minutes after the hour. So that's pretty damn good, considering that uh, we didn't know what was going on there. Now, uh, we got a show for you this week. Uh, I mean, it's it, it never ceases to amaze me the amount of news uh, that we are able to gather. And a lot of times, uh, we get so enthusiastic that we gather it at the beginning of the week. And when I go back and look at the show notes... Uh, it's like, damn, this is old news, but it's really not. I mean, it's it's only in a seven day period, and normally we don't gather news on the Sunday, at least yeah. I, at least I don't. Uh, but anyway, yesterday was was Gun Appreciation Day, Ward. I don't know if you did anything or I I decided to go out to a, a gun show, not a gun show, a gun shop. I went out to Anthony Arms, and there weren't any uh, like celebrations or, or you know picketers or anything like that. But I was looking at the employees there, and there's a lot of them. And I was going to purchase a couple items, some accessories, and I didn't even do it because they were three deep at the counter. I mean, these guys look shell-shocked, man. They look worn out. All you could hear, you could hear the phone continuously redialing the background check thing, and every single salesman was tied up, and there was just a human wall around the whole L-shaped counter. It was... uh. I mean, this is the the law of unintended consequences for the Democrats right here, man. America is tooling up. Yeah, and and well, not only that, the the fact that you know the there's so many people that are afraid that that they're going to try for a gun grab. They're saying, hey, you know what? Before they get a chance to to make it impossible for me to buy a firearm, I'm going to do so, and uh, you know, and they're you know, it'll be too late for them to deal with it. And I mean, ammunition's the same way. Ammunition they can't keep on the shelf. Well, because what's going to happen is that's going to be their tactic. I agree. Um, I agree. Because you know the it, it's too hard for them. The you know the way that the Constitution's written, it says you, that they can't prevent you from buying guns, but it doesn't say anything about them prevent you from buying ammunition. So that I think is going to be the their method of an end around is to use the the ammunition against you so you know it's like hey it's great that you have a gun you know but you don't got a bullet to put in it but americans are like yes i do <laughs> you know what i yeah. mean they're stocking up i mean it's it's unbelievable i mean i'm talking to people i've been a, a, a second amendment and a gun enthusiast my entire life but i've been talking to people that haven't been that have been awakened by this. And I just think, I'll be honest with you, Ward, I've been testing the waters around. I think we're going to get the Senate back over this. Yeah. I I, I mean, Bill Clinton, whole... B- Bill Clinton is out there preaching to these people, shut the hell up. He said this doesn't end well for us. Shut up. He, I mean, he's actively out there telling these people, you know, you're drunk on power. Uh but this isn't going to do well in 2014. There's a whole lot of Democrats that own weapons. Oh, yeah. And did, did you see that thing I posted on the Facebook page? Uh, there's actually a clause in the uh, health care, in, in Obamacare, that says they can't do a gun grab. Yeah, and you know who put it in there? 
Harry Reid. Harry Reid. Harry yeah. Reid to keep the NRA out of the argument. So he inadvertently already shot his party's communist left in the foot. That's another thing. I, I, I was reading. I'm telling you, we got to start calling a pig a pig on this. I'm not saying the words liberal anymore. There's nothing liberal about about Congress right now. There's not no. a, There's nothing Hubert Humphrey about Congress. This is the communist left. These people have taken the masks off. They're denouncing the Constitution. Their mouthpieces are doing it even more than they are, and you know where they're getting their marching orders. You know, when you hear Bill Maher and, and these idiots talk about the Constitution is just a washed-up document and then white people and own slaves, da-da-da-da-da-da-da, it is what it is. I mean, these are anti-American people that don't believe in the Constitution a lick. You know, they think all it's doing is slowing them down, which is by design. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. Absolutely. Bills were supposed to go into the Senate to die. You know, now off off script here, I, I've heard uh, one of the most despicable senators in the Senate from one of the most despicable states, at least despicably governed states, New York, Senator Chuck Schumer said today that he thinks that the Senate will pass a budget. That'll be revealing. I don't see that happening. Uh, you know, the the thing is, uh, and, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit, uh, you know, th they don't feel as though they have to. I mean, even though it it's stated in the Constitution that, that there's going to be a, uh, that the president's going to provide a budget, by, what is it, by the first week of February. Yeah, the president failed. I know that. And, and, and the president failed, and the president's only hit the – he's only been on time once in his entire tenure. and It was voted down unanimously. It, it was voted down unanimously every time. And, you know, and, and that's even when the, when the Democrats had the House and the, the Senate. So, you know <laughs> – I don't know. I think they're going to be asking for so much money uh, with the debt ceiling and the uh, – uh, the sequestration and everything else, I think they're starting to realize that they can't very well do that if they're not even putting a budget out there. Because, I mean, I, I think it's going to be unavoidable that the, the, the illegal corrupt media is going to be able to continue to avoid these issues. I mean, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not crazy. I know that the deck is stacked. And I, I know there's not a bunch that the Republicans can do during this time, uh, but I also know that there is going to be vast pressure on the Senate Democrats, especially the ones from red states, of which there are quite a few, uh, to start acting. So we're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, but I, I just I, I heard him say that when I heard he's one of the elder statesmen in the Senate. I mean, he's one of the bosses. So he's a despicable man too. I can't stand that guy. He's a Jew too. He's horrible. Yeah, I mean the things he does, and the, oh, it's just despicable. Uh, now, one thing that uh, I tried to start doing, Ward, I'm trying to get. You know, we have a solid audience, but it's it's remaining right around the same, and I want to try to grow it a little bit. So, what I've been doing, uh, your Facebook page uh, works a lot. I mean, it, it's it's big. It's bigger than the audience. Uh, so, we would encourage uh, the people on the Facebook page to listen regularly to the program. <laughs> it's what it's there for. Uh, so I've been saying some things on the Facebook page to that effect. Uh, but I, I went to, I belong, I, I was stationed in the Republic of Korea in the early eighties. And I was stationed at a place called Camp Stanley and Camp Stanley, uh, was in between Wee Jong Bu and Camp Casey. Uh, and it was the home of the artillery. And there's a Facebook page for people from Camp Stanley that I joined and how I've been participating uh, for several years. And it's a fairly big page. It's got, I think, 900 members or something like that. Uh, and a couple times, this last week, there was a, an, an, uh, a conversation. A guy was a little timid, and he came on there, and he said, hey, you know, I think I'm good with this, but I just wanted to see how you guys felt about this Second Amendment thing. And that set off a bomb. And, I mean, the, the role on that page, the, the conversation was deep. It was, I don't even know how many comments. But I decided, you know what, I'm going to comment on this, and I'm going to post the blog post that I wrote on the, on the site the day after it happened. And it got a lot of good 
publicity. And so then I, you know, I posted the show. Hey, watch this show. Listen to this show. You might, uh, you might enjoy it. So if there's anybody on here from Camp Stanley Facebook page, uh, send an email scr tv at live dot com and let us know that that's where where you're from. I just want to see if that's any effective at all. If anybody's catching the show uh, that's associated with that page. Uh, that being said, I also engaged the West Virginia. I can't remember what it stands for. Civil Defense League, I think. Anyway, there's a, if you go on the website, there's a video on there. And this guy, I don't know if you got to see it yet, Ward, but if you didn't, you got to check it out. This guy named Keith Morgan just kicked this communist left media guy's ass on this interview. He tried to get him, and he just couldn't do it. That's normally what happens. And, and you know, what they'll do is the, the, the common technique is if I, if I can't, uh, shout over you, you know, it, it's the old line. If I, if you can't dazzle them with diamonds, you baffle them with bullshit. And that's what they're trying to do. Exactly. And instead of, and, and their other tact is if they can't bullshit you, they're going to talk louder than you. And they're not, and they're, they're not afraid to lie. Stuff that's just, yeah, they're not afraid to lie whatsoever. And that, that, that beauty of this video. And again, I would, I would re- suggest everybody check it out. It'll be the first video below the show. Uh, but it gets to the point where this guy, every time he lies, the guy from West Virginia must have, the guy from the uh, WVCDL must have uh, edited the video because every time this guy lied, the guy put a link up on, on where he was going wrong, you know, on the on the facts. And it was so good at the end, he called anybody that has an AK-47 a Rambo, and that pissed the guy off. The guy was like, now, now why would you call... Doctors and lawyers and Rambo's. If I gave you an AK, well, not not only that, not only that. Okay, if you're gonna, why would you call anybody with an AK-47 a Rambo? An AK-47 is a Russian white rifle. Right. And then he he was talking about grenade launchers, and the guy's like, "Why are we talking about grenade launchers?" You know, it was excellent. The guy was just he knocked him out. But at the end, he said, he said, "So you think everybody's a Rambo?" So why are you using projection tactics? If I gave you an AK-47 and put it on the table, no, no. If I pulled out my 9 millimeter that I have right now and put it on the table, would you shoot me? And the guy's like, you have a gun? You're armed? Right? That's scary. Oh, it's it's great, man. It's, it's one of the best interviews I ever saw. My, my point was I went and joined the page and promoted the show there, too. So if you're from the WVCDL and you're listening to this, uh, let us know. I'd just be uh, be nice to know if these kind of things work. Uh, I I must say, ladies and gentlemen, that we are two dedicated talk show hosts because there is a National F- Football League playoff game in our division that's going on right now, and we decided uh, we were going to do the show anyway. Absolutely. I, I can't cheer for either one of these teams that are playing in, in good conscience. Um, you know, it, it would be very apocalyptic if I if I were to cheer for either Baltimore or New England being from Pittsburgh. So um, if you're a Baltimore fan, hey, God bless you. The same with New England fans. Uh, it, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm cheering for the plane to hit the stadium. It's a Berg thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's a Berg thing. Uh, okay, moving on. I just wanted to say that we don't normally talk sports on the show, but it's a, it's a fact. We're here for you, ladies and gentlemen. You guys are probably watching the damn game. <laughs> Billy will catch well, it's a good thing that you'll get us tomorrow. Yeah, that's a good thing about podcasts. Uh, now, Eric sent an email to the show a couple weeks ago, and he suggested that uh, we should uh, get engage. It, engage the Democrat, engage the liberals. And so this weekend I decided to do that. I was uh, – scanning around, and I saw a PodCamp Pittsburgh 7 presentation that I was uh, in, that I attended, and I, I even spoke up. You know, I mean, they, they were trying to say that Fox News wasn't about news, and I had to square them away with Brett Baer being one of the best in the business, in my opinion, and objective as hell. Uh, but anyway, I went on there and watched that, and the, and the liberal guy is from two political junkies. And uh, he goes by the name of Davo, I think, on the on the blog. But it's a it's a very uh, well uh, 
travel traffic uh, traffic blog. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of leftists in Pittsburgh, and uh, and he's cut right from the mold. I mean, he gets on there, and he basically I, I haven't been following him that long, so I could be a little bit inaccurate in my description of his hate. <laughs> but this guy gets on there, and every time anything comes out in the trib, he knocks it. And he got up there, and and he said at the beginning, I knew it was going to be a long day when he immediately dismissed anybody that had any arguments against global warming. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to give you the, the little back and forth that I commented on, and uh, the, you can go on the show notes links page. He's a, He has the first link on the show notes links page, so apparently he went on our site. But uh, if you want to go talk to him or, you know, see if you think he sounds reasonable or whatever, uh, the link is there. So I said, and I, I, I probably shouldn't have done this. He's a little overweight, you know, so my opening salvo was kind of like a little bit. Hutch said, damn, man, you should consider a diet. Global warming has been debunked scientifically, and you start your dissertation with the premise that anyone who believes other than you is just a moron. I attended this session, and although John Delano is slightly objective, I wish I would have been on the pan on the podium with you. I wonder, and I haven't followed you as closely as I will from now on. But what do you feel about the Second Amendment? I'm curious. And then I also interjected, "Please come to my site. We love the communist left to visit." <laughs> and I gave our website address. And then he got. Let's how long did it take him to respond? Six minutes. Uh, he, Dave O. said, for the record, I didn't use the term moron. I never said he did. Uh, I didn't use the term moron to describe anyone who fails to accept the science of climate change. But the science is solid. Go check with NASA. NASA, that's the organization that is there uh, to promote Muslim well-being, right? Isn't that their mission? Well, now it is because they, they don't shoot anything up into space anymore. Right. And, uh, and NOAA or the National Academy of Science, and they didn't find any fraudulent activity at any of those organizations either, I don't think. No, I got to interject something. Why, sir? Global, global warming is one of my things, and, and I bitch about it all the time. Here's the deal, Dave O. What you got to do is you got to understand that the scientists who uh, came up with the global warming, you know, rhetoric and, and you know how scary it was and how how desperate a situation it was was told to do so by the government they were told that if they did not you know provide um you know a warning for global warming that they would have their funding pulled it's just it, i mean it's it, it's fact all it's, you gotta do is follow the money you're right all you gotta do is follow the money and look at al gore's uh, yeah. I forget what it is even called now, the Chicago Climate Exchange or the Chicago Carbon Exchange, one of those two, and it's bankrupt. Yeah. It's, it, the, the whole thing is is a house of cards. It is. It's ridiculous. All right. in, in fact, the, I, I was looking for it while, while Hutch was talking. I couldn't find it. I just read it today, in fact, that you know, in, you could see the cycles of climate, of climate change. And in 1934, it was actually one degree warmer than it was in 1989. I read that article. So it, it, it's actually, you know, and anybody who was around in the 70s, there was an article in Newsweek in 1977 says, are you prepared for the next ice age? So they, you know, now think about this, okay? Let, let's Let's get this right. These weather forecasters can't tell you what it's going to do next fucking week, and they're going to tell you that in ten years from now that the weather's going to be the temperature is going to be fifty degrees warmer. Are you out of your mind? Didn't Al Gore's deadline already pass the day that the world no, was supposed well to? Pass. <laughs> well, I used that, that. That's why he sold his damn network because he needed money. I used our I used that Time Magazine cover comparison on an article that I posted reacting to the rest of this. Uh, if you choose to believe that it's been debunked, it only shows your scientific illiteracy. So I'm a scientific illiterate. But please feel free to post any debunking on your blog. I would guess you could fit it in someplace where you're not swift-boating John Kerry. Really? After eight years? Sir, I'm a veteran. I'm a combat veteran. Yeah, really, after eight years. He's a traitor. Yeah, there's nothing that can be said about John Kerry that would persuade me to think, you know, I'm not swift-boating him. 
the, no. the the term swift boating came from people who actually work who, who actually were on the swift boats that that he demonized all we and did they came out and they stood up for themselves that's what he, they did they stood up to uh, the guy that that, that this president is going to make the secretary of defense uh, secretary of state who who basically said that you know anybody that was in the military was a, a baby killer and, and so on and so forth and he hung out with hanoi jane and blah 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 so uh dave Vio, uh once again we're not swift boating john Kerry. john Kerry did it himself uh, i was we letting just, john Kerry speak for, he was speaking for himself all i did was showed video from the i think it was a dave cavett show i just put a video up there so you could you could listen to him yourself uh, he, he was he was the star of that video, not anybody from any swift boat. It was uh, it was an excellent video. Uh, but continuing, so we were, if I could squeeze it in someplace where I'm not swift boating John Kerry or promoting torture, which is still a war crime and still illegal. I don't know where I did that. I couldn't figure out what he was referring to on that. But if you're talking about waterboarding, yeah, I'm for waterboarding. Yeah. And, and that's not, I mean, it's in ta- in, called enhanced interrogation. And uh, if you happen to watch the movie Zero Dark Thirty, you know, the one that the White House gave all, you know, the declassified materials for the Ben Laden raid that they thought was going to be a rah-rah, shish-boom-bomb um, video for Obama. And it came out to show that Obama was weak and the fact that the enhanced interrogation techniques did work. Uh, Maybe that's where you need to go. You know, this bleeding heart liberal shit, you know, if if an enhanced interrogation technique, a waterboarding or torture, whatever the hell you want to call it, if that saves one of our guys, I'm all for it. Yeah. And uh, he continues, uh, which should no, he's or calling Senator Feinstein a bitch, which should fully explain to everyone here the true level of your discourse and your character, that is. So my character is under the microscope because, well, let me finish. And then I responded, this is still the United States. And any politician that openly states, which she did on our website, openly states that she wants everyone to turn in their weapons is clearly in violation of her oath of office and earned the title bitch. And I put the, uh, the now there was one more. A response to that that I didn't really understand where he said yeah you're not helping yourself and I'm like okay so a politician shouldn't have to follow her oath is that where he was going with that or but that was the end of it I got tired of it after that but uh this is what we're up against Ward this is the uh you got to go to that to his blog and look at it I mean it's uh it's amazing every argument that we've made about everything he just hyperlinks and dislinks and just uh the way some of these people think it boggles your mind, man. It really does. Uh, Anti Second Amendment, everything else. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it, it was fun. It was fun to deal with it, though. You know, for a little bit. I'll do. Oh, yeah. I'll do it again. I got him. Uh, I'm gonna argue with everything that that I care about. Half that shit I don't care about, but the important stuff I will. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your weekly jihad report, 12 January to 18 January. 55-0 jihad attacks, down to seven Alwa Akbars, 187 dead bodies, and 495 critically injured. The religion of peace, ladies and gentlemen, one body at a time. Now, Ward, this next story disturbed me. I moved it up in prominence. Uh, it was one of the later stories that were uh, added to the show notes, and when I saw it, I almost vomited. Uh, I'd like your opinion on this. It seems that West Point, which, ladies and gentlemen, is the United States Army's military academy, uh, West Point cites danger of far right in U.S. A West Point think tank has issued a paper warning America about far right groups such as the anti-federalist movement, which supports civil activism, individual freedoms, and self-government. This report was issued this week by the Combating Terrorism Center at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, New York, and is titled Challengers from the Sidelines, Understanding America's Violent Far Right. And I would ask you, do you think that that organization has been infiltrated? Oh, absolutely. 
Uh, here's the thing. I was going to try and find it, uh, and, I, and I will find it, and we can put a link to it. The, the Department of Homeland Security considers veterans on the top. I mean, we're above terror. That's, that's the first thing that as came to my far, mind when I saw this. I mean, as, as far as, you know, uh, what they consider groups that can potentially, you know, be volatile or whatever, it, it, it's veterans. And I, the more I hear about this, the more I think they're right, you know, because veterans are, are the guys that, that, you know, while they were, you know, off in college and, and, and they were, you know, smoking dope and doing whatever they're doing, the, the veterans were the guys that were, you know, getting up at 5 a.m., you know, and, 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 you know, strapping it on to, to, to defend the country. And those guys are the ones that understand what freedom is. They're the ones that understand what, what the, what the paycheck is or what the bill is for this freedom. Yeah. And, th and freedom isn't free. And, and these are the guys that fought for it, that, that earned the title of veteran and yeah, they're the first ones that are going to be going. Hey, this is bullshit. What and they you're are. trying to do is is illegal. It's it's anti freedom. And I went, you know, I went to war. I, whether you whether you served in wartime or not, if you served, you're a veteran, and yeah. you understand what the price is. Yep. And the thing that gets me though is that it, it's been infiltrated at this level, at a uh, normally conservative organization. I mean, uh, it's, this report says that there were 350 attacks initiated by far-right groups individuals in 2011. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't remember 350 attacks by the far-right. Uh, I remember Occupy Wall Street. I remember a whole lot of leftist things. Uh, I mean, it's been proven over and over uh, that the violence... Uh, is in the in the leftist groups, uh, no doubt about it. And I don't understand uh, that part of it. But if you just sent me a link, I can't see it because of the way my thing is configured. Uh, so you okay, may well, you, you the, may have to talk is, about it. I, I sent Hutch a link that is the uh, Homeland Security terror threat level, and veterans are number one, extremists yeah. are number two, the bad economy is three, illegal immigrants is four, and emerging nations is five. Hey, that's something. That's gratitude. Thank you, Homeland Security. Thank you for your service. I appreciate that. Uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's it's unclear what makes an attack far right, and and I just think I think there's got to be care in there, and, and there's got to be some communist leftists in there. There has to be. Oh, absolutely. And there has to be a there has to be no less than an investigation into everything when we get these people out, if we ever do. Uh, I mean, I mean, this has to be. We can't think that we're going to uh, replace politicians and have this fixed. We're going to have to have to do some uh, McCarthy style. Well, I'll get that'll get good on the on the lefties if they're listening to this. But McCarthy's been uh, be smart. Right. Yeah, he didn't he didn't do anything wrong. He got a little stupid at the end. He drank too much, I guess. But uh, anyway, that's just, uh, shouldn't Combating Terrorism Center be combating radical Islam around the world? Or it, it, within the country? Uh, it just uh, blows me away. Now, uh, another story that came up, Ward, that, that I'm, I'm very glad to see. Uh, I don't know if it's, I mean, I'm, I know it doesn't have any wheels under it. Uh, but at least there's two. Republican congressman with the balls to say that they're going to impeach Obama if he uses executive action for gun control. Well, I think that that he actually realized that, and and when he you know was surrounded by the children. Now, he, here's the it. thing. He, here's the thing I don't get. Okay, you, you mean to tell me that that they had four kids on stage, right? And he said that these four children wrote him a letter asking him to stop gun violence. Now, I, I'm not really a, 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 a you know, super genius or anything, so somebody needs to explain to me how these children would just come up with, out of the blue, go, you know what, I'm going to write the president, and I'm going to tell the president that I think that, that, that he should stop gun violence. How sick they you don't th you, you, you don't think it had anything to do with, I don't know, their teachers. 
or maybe it was just a an assignment given to them by their teachers because at the but at the behest of the white house oh i'm sure and we're going to bring these we're going to parade these children in you know it, it's it, it's stupid you know and, and i think he realized that you know if he tried to do if he tried to to you know end around the constitution especially the second amendment with an executive order there would have been held up oh there would have because been because everyone there still the is going to be it's not over yet there well, is yeah but every one of the democrats that's going to that they're, they're trying to to we you know weasel their way back and forth going i support it when it when it's convenient and i don't support it if he would pull that card and say bam mm -hmm. i'm doing this so even the most staunch lefty democrat who has any idea of continuing political office is going to turn on him absolutely uh, because and he's really going to have a choice because if he violates the second amendment of the constitution that is i mean other than all the other stuff you know it's like it, I, I i've been seeing all this stuff where you know you you need to have more strict background checks unless you're a drug cartel in mexico or or and, a president exactly you know so personally i think when i see all these kids out there and the letters they wrote i don't give a damn what a little kid says a little kid doesn't have anything in this conversation you know if it was up to me you wouldn't be able to vote until you're 30 you know i mean uh, the, the kids are what's screwing this country up you know the ones that mean well and feel well but don't know shit yeah well i mean it, it's the same thing i mean <laughs> This is a tactic that's been used by every dictator ever. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, I mean, Hitler said, it, I mean, it's in Mein Kampf. He said, this is how you do it. You you, you parade the children out and you make it about the children. Yep. I mean, you, you look at, at Mein Kampf and you look at the stuff that Hitler did and then you just compare it. I, I'm not I, I'm not trying to lead you down a road and say, you that's know, true, I'm though. saying that this is, that he's Hitler, but the the if you follow you know point a to point b it, i mean it, it's hitler the, he it's nationalized hitler all the businesses i mean he nationalized the banks he did the exact same thing uh the and, auto and, industry and, the healthcare and, industry and we're not going to we're not going to pretend that didn't happen i mean it did uh so anyway that's uh that's just something what were we talking about <laughs> the impeachment at least somebody it's so illegal that i mean i can't believe that it hasn't come up before this but it's just getting to the point of no return and i agree with you i think he realized uh you know what this is a no win thing <laughs> there's like a million more guns on the market since i opened my mouth <laughs> you know so yeah uh, i mean uh, i know people and, man i know people that are around me are tooling up it's like damn <laughs> women here, here's the thing i mean I can understand him saying, you know what, th there should be a, a background check for mentally. If, if you're, if, if you've been in a mental institution and you're crazy and shit, yeah, I could see him saying, okay, you know, you spent time in a fucking crazy house, you know, maybe you have to have a doctor sign off and say, okay, he wasn't, you know, he was having delusions of grandeur or whatever. Yeah, I think I it, think the the standard needs to be, let him buy it. But if you can prove, like, in other words, like you just said, if somebody has a mental problem 30 years ago and, and it's squared away, you know, if a doctor will say it's squared away, you know, I think every effort needs to go towards you being able to be armed if you're a citizen. Absolutely. And I, and I totally agree with that. But at the same time, you get somebody who's just been oh, I discharged agree. I agree. from, you know, from a, from a psychiatric institute. And, and they say, you know, go down and they, you know what, I want to buy a, an, an AR-15 or, or, or I want to go buy me an assault rifle. Yeah. You can't buy an assault rifle, okay? <laughs> but uh, but the other thing, too, is the Lautenberg Amendment's a little funny. And I don't know, I'm going to study up on this. But I believe that it's you, if you are ever accused of domestic violence, that takes you off the list. Accused. Uh, I can't believe that you you have to you'd have to have it on your record. I, I have mean, to it, check. It would have to be. I'm gonna look. It would have it. to be something that was, you know, that you were convicted of. I maybe. have to check you know, it out. Because if you're convicted, a, a convict shouldn't be allowed to own a gun anyway. Well, I mean, a, a felon, I would say. I don't know. Yeah, about I it. mean, that, that's the way it is. A felon. If a guy, if a guy's on hard times and he gets caught shoplifting groceries or something, I mean, 
I don't, I don't. If he used a gun in the crime, that's different. Yeah, but, but to I mean, say that he can't defend the, his family. The way it is now, a felon's, a felon's not allowed to own a gun. Yeah, that's and, fine. And, you know, and nine times out of ten, what happens? You know, you get these guys that are repeat offenders. So they've they've been felons before. They've shot people before, and, and they have guns. That goes back to the argument that you can make all the laws and all the rules that you want. The bad guys are still going to end up with guns. Yeah. And the good, you're all you're doing is taking guns. You're you're taking pr- protection away from people who need it. And I will say hello to Jeffrey in the chat room. Uh, I think one other thing that uh, is a little uh, not so good in the law is if you serve. And let me finish this all the way through before you shoot before you shout at me. If you serve. Over two years, or no, if you were convicted of a crime to where you could have served over two years, you can't own a gun. And there's several nonviolent criminals that fall into that category. One of them is failure to pay child support. Uh, There's several crimes like that that the law is kind of a little shady. It goes past the felon part. You know, I agree with the felon part. But there's well, yeah, the felon part's all I agree with. I do too, I, and I think I also think that the background checks and any and all records should stop at the state level. I do not think the federal government should have the availability of everybody else's records. I think that should stop with the governor of the state. And if a federal government has a viable case on somebody, then they can approach the attorney general for that state, and that attorney general can decide. If, if they, in fact, deserve those records. I don't like the idea of those records in, in Washington's hands because of the type of administration that we have right now. You know? So anyway, uh, moving right along, uh, we had a vote. We had a couple votes, but they voted on uh, the Hurricane Sandy relief, and, and I believe that what it did is it identified the first uh can, the first candidates that I think organizations like uh freedom works uh could start getting primaries ready uh in the g o p primaries coming up and i'm gonna i'm gonna list a couple of them everybody that listens to this show isn't from this area, so you might be from one of these other other states and I would suggest that you go to the show notes links page uh and you can look at the full the full list, but uh, Rodney Alexander from Louisiana, Charles Bootsteiny from Louisiana, John Carter from Texas. There's a whole list of them. None from Pennsylvania. Michael Turner from Ohio, Ed Whitfield from Kentucky. Uh, but this is a list of Republicans that voted for this goddamn disgusting. Did you see this bill? Did you see this uh, bill? It's sixty billion dollars. Yeah. That like most of it has nothing to do with Hurricane Sandy. And we continue to go down this path uh, with the, 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 the gravy train comes rolling through Washington, D.C., and all these people jump on it like we're not $16 trillion in debt. And it's got to stop. I mean, it's just absolutely, these Republicans need to be primary to hell out. They do, because they either have pork products involved with it or something else uh, to that effect. I don't know what it is, but... Uh, there's 25 Republicans there that are going to be the first ones that need to get primaried out, and the lists are on the show notes links page. It's got to end. Oh, absolutely. Like, you're absolutely right, Hutch. Uh, you know, I can understand them saying, hey, you know what, there, there's people that are suffering, you know, because they, they lived on the beach and they they took a hit. I can dig that. But when it's... Well, in order for me to sign this bill to help those people out, um, I got to get something for my district. It's disgusting. We talked about it last week. But at least now we have names. There's names of, of, of Republican congressmen that need to be voted out. They do. We're not going to get anywhere until we get something closer to pure when it comes to conservative representation. These people are saying they're Republicans. They're from Democrat districts. And... It's got to end. It just does. It's it's got to end soon. Uh, now, again, 
the president already already told Paul Ryan he's done. He's not gonna he's not gonna meet it. Yeah, he said I'm not gonna. Uh, I mean, we and we kind of touched on this earlier in the show. Uh, once again, Paul Ryan sent a letter to the White House and said. Uh, you know, and we talked about this like two weeks ago and said, hey, are you going to, you know, meet the, the deadline for the budget? And uh, the White House has informed the House Budget Committee Chairman Paul Ryan that it will miss the legal deadline for sending a budget to Congress. In a letter received late Friday uh, that the budget will not be delivered by February 4th as required by law. In the letter, Zeintz said the administration is working diligently on our budget request. The letter blames the late passage of the fiscal cliff deal for the delay, saying that because tax, uh, because tax and spending issues were not resolved until January 2nd, the administration was forced to delay some of its FY 2014 budget pre uh, preparations. In turn, it will delay the budget submission to Congress. We will submit it to Congress as soon as possible, Zionist writes. Uh, you know, it, it, it's funny how they're going to blame the fiscal cliff for it. And... I like the way they lie. I, I like the way that they come out and Obama had a press conference. He reiterated his stance. He said, failure to raise the debt ceiling will cause a default on payments ranging from, ranging from Social Security benefits to tax refunds to bond interest, depending on how long it takes. And that's a lie. That what, what's better than default, that is default too, is not paying your bills and and the bills that we have the serious bills the interest on our debt our debt and and it's the service on the debt and the interest on the debt we have much more revenue that comes in every month from taxpayers than that so that is a lie right off the bat and it will be told and it will be told often now i understand that what the gop has done is they have decided and i i'm in favor of this they decided to go ahead and just pass it. You know, they're going to tie it to something, but they're not going to, there's not going to be an argument. We lose it every time. The American people don't care enough about economics to understand that we're not going to default. And, and if, if soldiers aren't going to get paid, it's only because the president said so. You know, and, and I just don't think there's enough interest in that out in the country. It's, it's been proven over and over. I said before, I think it's time to pick another battlefield. Well, it goes back to, I mean, that's always their, the, the same thing, right? If they can't get the, what they want, it's, well, the soldiers aren't going to get paid and we're going to, you know, grandma is not going to get paid. They're going to, they're trying to take away her social security check. And, they fall for it know. every time. I mean, and the media just sits up there and blatantly lies. You know, I read another good article today that basically said that what Obama's doing is killing the media. This might be, this could very well be, I mean, look, Time Magazine, I mean, uh, Newsweek is gone. The New York Times just laid off hundreds. Every media organization across the globe, across the spectrum, except for Fox News, is getting their asses handed to them. Well, part of the reason is, number one, nobody has faith in them anymore. I mean, even even the, the super libs, understand that what they're they they have to know that they're being lied to and, to and the fact that they can go up and they can blatantly lie i i think that's and this is a story that we talked about through executive order the president has his finger on the internet switch you know and, and we said this before on this show knowledge is power yeah that's why we knowledge do this show. is power that's why we do this show to to help people understand what's going on because we know that the, that the liberal media isn't telling you the truth it's a sad state of affairs could you imagine where the country could be with an honest media and honest that's all i'm asking honest truth the truth will set you free if the republicans are killing the country say it but but just yeah this report honestly that's all we need and here's a here's a, a very good a very good uh incidence of that is this next story why, why Michelle Bachman is right about Keith Ellison. Keith Ellison is a congressman from Minnesota that makes me nauseous. Uh, while Representative Michelle Bachman has been vindicated for suggesting that Muslim Brotherhood elements have infiltrated the U.S. government, the left-wing activist group People for the American Way has launched 
a petition drive against Representative Bachman in an effort to remove her from the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Now, that's just disgusting. And what she did is Congressman Michelle Bachman has accused Congressman Keith Ellison of having a long record of being associated with the Hamas Link Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE, and the Muslim Brotherhood, evoking the days of McCarthyism, a common charge being leveled at Bachman these days. Ellison responded, I am not now, nor have I ever been associated with the Muslim Brotherhood. He accused Bachman of religious bigotry, which is uh, ridiculous. I think she has a very, a very narrowly prescribed definition of who belongs and who doesn't. And there's a whole block of people she doesn't like. I think she thinks that we're evil because we don't understand the God, understand God the way she does. It's also about marginalizing and alienating a certain, certain group of Americans who she does not view are American enough. Not content with that, he accused her of petty attention-seeking. The only problem with Ellison's wounded martyr stance toward Bachman's accusations is that what she said is true. Ellison really does have a long record of being associated with Hamas Link Care and the Muslim Brotherhood. As long ago as 2006, Ellison's closeness to Nihad Awad, co-founder of Hamas Link Care, was a matter of public record. Uh, Awad, who notoriously has said in 1994 that he was in support of the Hamas movement, spoke at fundraisers for Ellison, raising considerable sums for his first congressional race. According to the investigative journalist Patrick Poole, Ellison has appeared frequently at CARE events since then, despite the fact that CARE is an unindicted co-conspirator. You know, they ought to change that, too. They ought to indict the sons of bitches. Unindicted yeah. co-conspirator in a Hamas terror funding case so named by the Justice Department, CARE operatives have repeatedly refused to denounce Hamas and Hezbollah as terrorist groups. Several former CARE officials have been convicted of various crimes related to jihad terror. Uh, I mean, it is what it is, man. She... She was right, and she's always been right, and I lost a lot of respect for Marco Rubio when he didn't stand up with her, and John Boehner, and John McCain, and the rest well, the of these thing people. Is, I have absolutely no faith in John Boehner, nor do I have any faith in McCain. Uh, I mean, the, all they're doing is they're trying to, you know, they're not trying to, to help or point out what's wrong with this country. All they want to do is, you know, who do we have to pay to make this go away? That's it. And, and that's basically what it is. Um, and, and I was looking while uh, when you started the story because I had a thing. I had a thing about the debt ceiling. And uh, in 2006, Obama said, and I quote, America's debt ceiling is a sign of leadership failure. Oh, yeah, when Bush was in. And in and in thir and in 2013, he said not raising the debt ceiling, the debt ceiling would be absurd and irresponsible. Yeah, called him called him unpatriotic. Yeah. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, I would suggest that you go to the show notes links page to read the rest of this story on Keith Ellison because he is a freaking jihadist. I mean, you look at his associations. Uh, Keith Ellison's brotherhood ties should be investigated. Uh, that see he and so many others on the left have had such a furious reaction to her mere call for an investigation is only an indication that they have something to hide. John Boehner and the rest of the Republican congressional leadership should be defending her and joining her call for investigations in the Muslim Brotherhood influence in the government. Instead, to their shame, they have joined Ellison in throwing her to the wolves in confronting the threat of Islamic supremacism, and meanwhile, the Islamic supremacist continue to advance. I'll bet you there's one in West Point. Uh, uh, I, I would not doubt that. Uh, now, something that, uh, there's a phenomenon going on. Uh, we are very lucky to have, from Texas, a Tea Party senator that is very articulate when it comes to conservatism. And he's been speaking out a lot lately. I mean, this guy's got the I don't think Alan West ever got on the Sunday shows. I mean, I don't think he ever made it that far. But Tom, not Tom, Ted Cruz from Texas uh, was speaking about Obama recently. Yeah, and, and uh, Senator Cruz said Thursday that Barack Obama is high on his own power. That's a fact. With regard to the president's announced efforts uh, on gun control. 
Speaking on Laura Ingram's radio show, Cruz, who was just elected to the Senate last November, said, this is a president who has drunk the Kool-Aid. He is feeling high right. Uh, he, he's feeling right now high on his own power, and he is pushing on every front on guns. Cruz said, and I think that it's really sad to see the president of the United States exploiting the murder of children and using it to push his own ex extreme anti-gun agenda. I think that the president is proposing, and the gun control proposals that are coming from Democrats in the Senate are number one, unconstitutional, and number two, they don't work. They're just bad policy. Yeah, Ted Cruz is okay in my book. He's able to really articulate the uh, the gun question. I mean, he's really good on that, and, and he's uh, definitely good on the fiscal problems that, that plague us. I mean, we're, we're in desperate need. Uh, that's one of the reasons we do this show. I mean, we're in desperate need of some communicators that can get out there. Uh, that's why I, I was so uh, excited about uh, uh, the guy that, that, that spoke from the West Virginia uh, Civil Defense League. I mean, this guy was just excellent, man. I mean, he was this this leftist was coming back at him, and he was shooting him down at every turn. I mean, I know that, ladies and gentlemen, that are listening to the program, I know I'm not the only one that when you watch an interview by a leftist and you watch some old codgy Republican shout the party line, you're screaming at the TV, you know, and saying, "Hey, why doesn't this guy say this? Why doesn't he say that?" I mean, there's no way this president should be. Not just the president, but these these leftists. There's no way they should go unchallenged with the, some of the things that they say. I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the stuff that Nancy Pelosi has done and said, you know, had had that been a Republican who came out and said, "Well, we can't tell you what's in this bill until after we pass it." <laughs> if that had been a Republican that done that, that there would it would have been you know chaos, and. The, the fact that, you know, it, it, and it, <laughs> I, it, it's just irritating. It, it does. I know. It aggravates me so much I start to stutter. The, the fact that the media doesn't do anything because it's a Democrat. You know, I mean, we had a story where Van Jones said, you know. Shit, I almost was, forgot about him. <laughs> yeah. Well, where he said that it, it had uh, Obama not been – the president that they were going to protest and oh, yeah. picket and they had all kinds of stuff lined up so for the uh the oil uh the oil leak in the gulf when when that happened had that been a a, a republican president you know it, i mean the fact that obama didn't go to the to the coast for four months after oh, that was uh, that was unreal there was like nothing coming out of washington but uh yeah so I don't know. I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing Ted Cruz in the future. I think he's going to be a a good guy. Rand Paul's starting to starting to make some noise too. Rand Paul basically told Chris Christie to shut the hell up. Somebody needed to do that. I mean that guy there. I, I've lost. I don't even want to hear about Chris Christie. Uh, Chris Christie's dead to me. He's a freaking Democrat as far as I'm concerned. Oh, absolutely. He was. I mean, he was, I... he was good with the unions, but other than that, there's there's things that are much more important than the unions. Well, he, I think he was actually, you know, I mean, he was a rhino. I mean, that's probably why he got elected. Yeah. You know, for him to say, I got elected because I was a Republican. He's no Republican. And any Republican pundit that brings his name up loses immediate credibility with me. And they're, yeah. and they're doing it. They're doing it. Like, I would never get behind that guy. I mean, it's time for his turn to the right, you know, but it's not going to work with me. I saw the Muslim people he put in the judiciary, you know, the Muslim Brotherhood style people. You know, oh yeah, and and it's just uh, it's not going to wash. I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. Uh, now, as to what we were talking about earlier, with the uh, left wing environmental, you know, uh, I put something up too on uh, on the Facebook page. It, it's a little the video is a little bit old, but it, it might not be on the Facebook page. It might be on my page. I can't remember, but I'll get it on the I'll get it on the steel or on the Facebook page. I don't know if you remember it, but it was these environmentalists that were out in the woods and they were crying for the trees. Oh, yeah, yeah I remember that. <laughs> Somebody reposted that on LiveLeak and I had to throw it out there. But this, a government scientist were fired, for, government scientists were fired for telling the truth. Something is amiss at the Department of Interior. Eight government scientists were recently fired or reassigned 
after voicing concerns to their superiors about faulty environmental science used for policy decisions, which begs the question, are some government agencies manipulating science to advance political agendas? Dave-o, dave Yeah, I think this, this, you know, he asked for, for links. I think we give him this link and say, look, you know, when you blackmail people into saying <laughs> what you want them to say, you know, a scientist is supposed to report facts. Yeah. No matter what, whether it, 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 it whether it furthers your cause or not, you expect them to have, you know, scientific value and scientific merit. And if they come back and say, you know what, we can't prove it one way or another, then so be it. You can't prove it one way or another. But when you say to them, hey, you're going to say what we want you to say or you're going to be unemployed. Unbelievable, man. And it happened. I mean, Department of Interior. It's, uh, I mean, they uncovered all those email trails. Where, oh, yeah. Where they, they were saying that. that the guy from, what, was he from Harvard or something? Or where was he from? The, like the grandfather of global warming, which started out being global warming. But the political. Well, no, it started out being global cooling. Right, but the global warming In the part, 70s, it was global cooling, and, and we were going into an ice age, and then once that ice age didn't materialize, it said, oh, shit, must be because everything's heating up. So we go so to global it warming, became global warming, and then we start easing into the cooling again, so then it becomes climate change. I mean, this is not something that's uh, done just by accident. I mean, this is, all you got to do is follow the money, man. This is a, a giant global hoax to get people to pay taxes on CO2. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's what it is. And, and basically, <laughs> that carb, what they're wanting you to pay tax on is carbon dioxide. Yeah. All right, so in order for you to reduce your carbon, carbon dioxide, dioxide, you need to quit that, fucking breathing. That, that, that feeds the trees. I mean, that yeah. they're trying to, it, it's I mean, like, it's unbelievable, man. It really cause, is. Because that, I mean, anybody who had, you know, basic biology understands how photosynthesis works. Yeah. And, and carb, the that trees was the take first in big, the carbon dioxide and make oxygen. That was the first big word that you learned, boys and girls, remember? Oh, yeah. That was the first one. You were all proud of yourself when you learned that. Photosynthesis. Yeah. Mrs. Smurdell. Uh, anyway, the the whole global warming thing. There's one thing that controls global warming, and that's the, the furnace, the sun, and our distance from it. No little level in between. In between, that's like saying that the air, in between the fire and the bottom of the frying pan, has something to do with how fast the eggs are going to cook. You know, the sun is in charge. The air is not in charge. You know, that's just a that, that's for a Yenzer point of view. That's that's for a basic. I shouldn't use the word Yenzer on this program. I've never done it before, and I'll never do it again. I might even bleep that out. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, uh, oh, man. Yeah, so Rand Paul is starting to make some noise. He's uh, been out there been out there talking, and I can get behind Rand Paul. If Rand Paul doesn't get I think he's smarter than his dad. If he doesn't get his bad shit you know, crazy as his old man. Yeah, I agree with you. I could actually. And, and I, I even said before, and I've said it on this show, and I'll say it again. I agreed with 90% of what Ron Paul said. And I like the way Rand is his take on the military stuff that Ron Paul said. See, I think Ron Paul just knew he couldn't get anything, so he just said whatever he felt like. He's 90 years old. Like, I'm getting ready to die. I'll say what the hell I want. You know, you know how people get when they get. Oh yeah, he's batshit crazy. <laughs> My grandmother was the same way, but uh, I think Rand Paul, the way he handled it, the way he spoke of a strong military for national defense that doesn't get involved in everybody's damn civil war. I don't have a problem with that. No, I totally agree with that. I do, and, I do not have a problem. The only with way that. that we could do that once, I, once again, I'm gonna, and I've said it before on the show. The only way that we can do that is to get out of the fucking U.N. Oh, I, I agree, and I think Rand Paul would, would probably back that. I'd be all behind that. So would I. And, and I mean, I, I just don't, as long, I would, I would like to know his definition of a threat. I would like to know if he thinks Islam is a threat or not. You know, there's some, there, there are some basic things that you have to meet for me to be behind you, uh, and that's one of them. I mean, just because 
of the last two or three years of the studying that I've done because of this show uh, just leads me to that has to be a prerequisite. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, contact the show, scrtv at live.com. Go to Steel City or Facebook.com slash Steel City Resistance. There's always a ton of stuff on there. Like the page. Uh, download the shoot show on iTunes. Get it on Stitcher. Uh, what else is going on, Ward? Anything else happening? Uh, you got to hit our hit up the web, the website itself, steelcityresistance.wordpress.com. Um, ton of videos there, by the yeah, way, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Hutch. Hutch. Whereas I do all the Facebook stuff, Hutch does all the WordPress stuff. So uh, we kind of we kind of each have our own little our own little world. And there there have been times when there was some cross pop you know pro- population where Hutch will post something on Steel City Resistance and I'll repost it on on the Facebook page. But I, I try not to do that. You know, oh, you can. There's no to, problem. To give them their own separate entities or their own separate identities or whatever. Uh, but yeah. Definitely check them out. Uh, tell your friends. Um, you know, your like-minded friends or your friends that you have that, that don't quite see eye to eye with you and, and turn them on to us and see if we can convince them otherwise. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we'll uh, we'll do that, and we'll, we'll talk with anybody that talks civilly. Uh, no doubt about it. Anyway, you got anything else for the program, Ward? No, sir. I am over and out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, we will definitely catch up with you next week.